Uh, welcome to our session, uh, The Future of Dynamic Collaboration on Development and Adaptation from Japan. <laughs> I have actually the script, but uh, I try to, you know, speak English by myself. I'm Yohei Suzuki from the Cyber Trust Corporation. I'm joined by many baskets from the uh, OS Foundation. Well, um, to start and, and um, briefly, I discuss about, you know, uh, collaboration between the Cyber Trust and the OMS, uh, OS Foundation. And I've been some mainly talk more, you know, about Linux and uh, the foundation things. I think it's, uh, we will show the, um, uh, what do you say, uh, we are focus on and uh, how we are shaping uh, our future. Uh, again, my name is Yohei Suzuki. I'm um, from the Cyber Straps. I'm, uh, you know, I uh, actually uh, uh, over 20 years. Uh, <coughs> Uh, actually, the experience uh, in the um, persuading and the monetizing and uh, struggling based on the OSS business. Uh, it's a kind of, you know, exciting, but it is really hard. And um, I'm, uh, you know, I'm proudly and deeply involved with um, Alba Linux and the Miracle Linux Fusion. And um, Minax Linux is uh, a uh, Red Hat compatible OS uh, in Japan since 2000. Um, it's a, uh, a, a significant part of this history, uh, this part. I think it's uh, Minax Linux is uh, kind of, you know, sounds a little bit, uh, um, a little bit, uh, unique for the English people, I think. Sometimes ask me uh, why the Miyaku Inax is, but uh, this is because I, I just sort of explained that the Miyaku Inax is um, uh, at the two, 2000, uh, Rocknix Japan uh, founded the Miyaku Inax Corporation, and uh, uh, they released uh, uh, Miyaku Inax distribution, so named after Oracle. Oracle, Miracle, and Miracle Linux. That's true. Oh. So um, now uh, let me introduce Benny a little bit. Um, please uh, introduce yourself. Sure. So I'm Benny. Uh, I know that most of you are not here to hear my story, so I'm going to be brief. I have been a sysadmin for a number of years. I've been involved in open source. I moved from tech into community building so that's where you'll see me mostly now i love star wars i if you have noticed my my earrings are millennium falcon falcons today uh you can find me if you have questions you can either talk to us here obviously you can find me on the internet i realize we're not supposed to call it twitter anymore but <laughs> that's fine um, and uh if you i'm gonna I'm a, I'll just leave it there. Thank you, Benjamin. Okay, again, um, uh, let's dive into the, our collaboration with the Linux OS Foundation. Um, at the Club of Linux uh, uh, Cyber Trust, we've uh, taken a big step uh, by uh, you know uh, combining our Miracle Linux uh, with our Linux. It's really kind of big decision for us. Uh, back in May, uh, we have, um, uh, we are proud to announce that uh, CyberTrust become a uh, platinum member of the um, Amnet OS Foundation. And since then, um, I've been uh, deploying our engineer to um, this uh, Amnet community like Matson and the other people. Uh, you know, we are totally, uh, fully uh, committed to the uh, Ammonix Foundation as well as uh, this community. Because, you know, we want to, you know, I, our goal is to uh, create a Red Hat compatible OS 
to meet um, global standards uh, of the Japanese quality is uh, my, you know, goal. Okay, um, let's um, more talk about uh, reflecting, reflecting uh, Miyako Linux achievement in our Linux. You know, um, actually the Miyako Linux has been uh, supported um, critical uh, systems, uh, especially for the, um, I think it's uh, industry system, for over 20 years. I think it's, that's it's, uh, the, the experience and the uh, uh, track record, well, um, it definitely uh, strengthened to the community conti uh, continuity, I think. And uh, 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 is, uh, as you already know, that um, business oriented always and like uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, we were worked hard to, you know, um, uh, maintain with um, uh, independent uh, software vendors and uh, independent hardware vendor to get their certification. It's really hard. You know, it's the uh, same for the Armor Linux. So. We uh, decided to uh, establish the uh, cyber uh, certification SIG to uh, develop and uh, uh, strengthen to the relationship with um, uh, these vendors. Uh, actually, the, the cyber trust is um, uh, specialized in long-term support and uh, OSS compliances. I think it, this, you know, uh, OSS summit, uh, some, you know, CyberTrust and uh, engineer already um, presentation. We are focused on the OSS compliance things also. And I think it's, um, Omni has also uh, focused on the achieving uh, FIPS 143 compliance and also uh, providing uh, software bone also. And I believe that uh, we aim to uh, fully use, you know, cyber trust expertise, like uh, Linux things and uh, compliance things in uh, our Linux. So uh, that's what I want to talk. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you want to cover to the you know, over to the Benison, you can uh, thirty minutes. Okay. So we're going to talk about our history, how we came to be. We're going to talk about. We'll just we'll just dive in, right? Anybody who has been around the Red Hat ecosystem for a while knows that this is kind of what we had for many many years. It would start in Fedora, the playground, the, the testing, the proving grounds. They would get pulled down into Red Hat with a regular release, and then CentOS would rebuild Red Hat, right? For many, many years. In 2019, CentOS introduced this thing called CentOS Stream. CentOS Stream sits between uh, Fedora and Red Hat. <coughs> It allows earlier adoption of the operating system. It allows deeper testing than has historically happened. But it's not the downstream version of CentOS, right? And then in December of 2020, Red Hat announces that they are shifting all of the resources that have historically been part of CentOS to CentOS Stream, effectively killing CentOS Linux. As a community, we all felt that change very strongly. At, at its peak, CentOS had, I, I saw a number somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of 7 million servers online. That is a huge community to just be left adrift. So our founder, the person behind our, uh, our genesis, Igor, who is the CEO of Cloud Linux, 
announced he would be backing a uh, CentOS replacement. There, that announcement happened in January of 2021. And by March, we had a board, we had an, a foundation, we, were, we had released our first version, and we were ready to go. Our initial board is made up of, of, of appointees, obviously, because without a, a foundation, you have to appoint people. But the group of people that Igor pulled together were technologists, were people that had been in the Red Hat ecosystem for a while, were people that were experts on open source, because those people together made sure that what we set up was going to be stable and what we needed for long-term growth. We pulled our some initial sponsors. Those were the ones we launched with. And very shortly, we added ARM and uh, High Velocity and Equinix. They together gave us the hardware or uh, like the funds, the people that we needed to get an operating system off the ground. Since then, we have added another 25 sponsors. This is what it looks like today. Uh, and all of the people up here, all of the companies up here, are invested in the future of Alma Linux for one reason or another. This is what our adoption rate looks like. This is uh, current as of three days ago, I think. Um, we were just talking about how in July of this year, I had made a slide that looked similar to this that had 600 or 500,000 as the number of servers that were calling home to our mirror system every night. And since July, we've added 200,000 more. So obviously, we are filling a need. This data is pulled from our mirror system. So in early 2022, or late 2021 technically, we added uh, count me data. Essentially, when a server com calls home once a week to update its DNF uh, database, it says, hi, I'm online. That is an optional flag, so it doesn't happen every time. It is a, or it doesn't happen with every server. And if a company or a organization has their own mirror, we don't see those. So these are just the servers that we know of that are online. Obviously, massive growth. There's some been some, some exciting moments in there. In the last two and a half years, we have done a lot. Uh, this is a very brief look at what we've covered. Um, <laughs> the most interesting thing about this slide to me is that as we look at this list, everything here is done because someone in our community needed it. This isn't we're not corporate driven because we're a community operating system. So this isn't a feature request from a customer that comes in and says, we need this thing. This is all somebody in our community wanted to add or wanted to see support for this thing. Uh, <laughs> number two, we'll get to in a second. But before 8.9 and 9.3, we had gotten so good that our releases were within a day or two of Red Hat. As you look at this list, you will see that primarily what we're doing is solving the pain points that we had as users with CentOS. Release times, support, like architecture, architecture support, that kind of stuff. Let me make sure there's nothing I want to point out specifically. No, I think we're good. Lots of extremely cool stuff up there. So, we took up the charge. We were offering an operating system as soon as we could. From March of 2021 to June of 2023, we were a choice for people that were looking for a CentOS replacement all over the world. I'm going to go back here. No, not going to go back. We're just going to go forward. In June of 2021, I am certain most of you have seen this update. This was Mike McGrath from Red Hat announcing that they would no longer be releasing Red Hat sources, Red Hat Enterprise Linux sources, to CentOS, uh, git.centos.org like they always had. This broke our build pipeline without question. 100% what we had been doing no longer worked. 
but that was true for everyone who was trying to rebuild Red Hat, right? The thing about this, when we, when we saw this come out, what we knew immediately was that we had to take our time to make a stable, long-term, forward-looking decision. We took a couple of weeks to talk to all of the people in our community, all of the people that would be impacted by our decision to understand exactly what they needed from us. And what they ultimately needed wasn't exactly Red Hat. What they needed was Red Hat compatible. So that gave us a bunch of freedom. Red Hat compatible, from our perspective, means that we are using CentOS stream repositories as our up, upstream in 99% of the of cases. I'll fudge the numbers a bit. Our lead architect is in the back. He's going to correct me. But nearly all cases, we're using CentOS stream as our upstream. We are pulling in any patches that we can't get from CentOS stream uh, from other sources that we consider legal or acceptable. We are 100% laser focused on making sure that there are no breaking changes from Red Hat to Alma Linux. Because what we heard time and again is if I have an application that works on Red Hat, I need it to work on Alma Linux. That's the line. Obviously, maintaining, continuing to maintain our, the, the, the things that people have also counted on us for, which are stability, speed, and security, right? In everything that we've been able to do, we pull 99% of the, the code, like I said, from CentOS Stream, and that means that nearly all of the code is exactly what Red Hat has anyway. Less than 1% of the, the code differs, and nearly all of that is in the kernel. So you're not going to see drastic differences between us and what you get with Red Hat. And that's the point, right? We need enterprise Linux that's stable long term for our, our users. We've also had the ability to add new stuff since June. Uh, we added another repository that has packages that are unique to Alma Linux. They are not, we can, we can get in a little bit into what they will be. The goal with the Synergy repo is not to duplicate anything ex that exists in Apple. So if you are using the extra packages for Enterprise Linux repo, you won't have any conflicts. We've committed to that. This is just additional packages that our users might want. It is, we also added a, a testing repo. So as we can now release additional things ahead of time, we get them tested. We've now had, this is, I only listed three here. I think there are five or six different times that we have added patches ahead of Red Hat and added and been able to release. Security patches, those first two especially, are critical for the users that are picking up Alma Linux. And those two we released almost a week ahead of Red Hat. And the reasons are very practical on the Red Hat side, why they move slower than we do. But we were able to build and test and get them out the door ahead of time. There's even just Monday, there was a kernel patch that we put out that was requested by somebody in our community that won't, it currently sounds like that patch won't land until 8.10, but it is, it causes instability. It is a bug that causes instability for people who are using large amounts of memory, and we wanted to be able to pick, release that ahead of time, so we did. That's the kind of stuff that we get to do. And I think, yeah, I'm going to hand it back to Suzuki-san. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're so quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you, Benny san uh, uh, for the insightful the overview of the Apple Index history and uh, ongoing the achievement. Uh, let's look at the uh, commitment to the stability and the security in the 
for status era. This is a um, big topic in the Japan, actually. Uh, which will show how our Linux uh, keeps Linux strong and as well as you know uh, leads stability and the security. This part, our Linux uh, bridging stability and the security in business. Um, well, um, I believe that uh, our Linux is all about integrity. Uh, this is a point I think. Uh, we aim to be um, genuous and uh, easy to understand always, uh, which is compatible uh, with uh, our, our Red Hat, actually. We know some are concerned about uh, switching from the CentOS. Uh, our objective is uh, to give uh, Japanese uh, businesses a Linux option to trust us to use E3. We follow a Red Hat policy and uh, some rules closely, um, focusing on, the, of course, um, corporate needs. That's the point. Uh, Cloud Linux and the Cyber Trust has over 10 years experience as, a, how do you say, commercial Linux distribution. Well, our approach uh, might be different, uh, might different, but uh, we sh shared a commitment. Uh, you know, um, we um, shared, uh, uh, you know, again, we shared a commitment uh, to long-term supply and uh, sticking to the regulation. That's uh, you know different to the other you know distribution. We focus on this. We are really you know uh, important to the integrity wise actually. So uh, again, uh, now one day uh, OSS is. Um, Uh, part of uh, nearly the every business system. Uh, the big questions for the future, you know, uh, how to use uh, OSS software in safety. I think it's every audience thinks about this. The big question for the future, yeah. And, uh, you know, this is the answer. We are here to uh, provide a clear and a secure choice for the Alma Linux. Please believe us. And this is the final uh, part. I will announce that we have uh, the first official event, Alma Linux Tokyo Day Tokyo 2023. It's uh, happening on the December 9th, at, uh, it's uh, close. Actually, the, this weekend, Saturday. Well, you can register from the official Alma Linux blog site. Uh, please register from that. Uh, okay. Oh. We we can focus on the future. Um, Benison. She's um, of course you know that already. She's the chairman of the Alma Linux OS Foundation. And uh, also um, Igor San, Igor Zelensky. Not here. Um, he is, um, uh, uh, how do you say, the Cloud Linux CEO uh, as well as uh, founder of Zara Linux. Uh, they will um, share insight into the latest uh, Linux trend and also share some idea how to survive percent OS error. This is point. So, um, so please join us, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you there and uh, talk with you and uh, drink some you know, with you. I am really uh, waiting for you, register. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, we have, oh, we have still have ten minutes. 
All right. Um, Q and A. Do you have any question? Please. We answered every question. Uh, we have yeah every question in the Wednesday Tokyo. Oh, <laughs> 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 the Bruce. Oh, if you have a question, please uh, hang up. Raise your hand or nothing. Please. So Project Elevate, did it just turn off again? No, okay. Project Elevate allows you to upgrade from CentOS 7 uh, to Alma Linux 8 in place. So if you have, again, we're solving the pain points that we as CentOS users had, right? So you can upgrade in place between major versions. And I know that that, that application, that, that upgrade project has been used a, a ton. There's a, a, my favorite example is a internet provider in the US that used it to upgrade 50,000 servers. So I know for sure it works. There are certainly caveats and there are, there are hurdles, but you, we have an amazing community that will provide support for it too. Okay, you, 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 you mean it's, uh, uh, US uh, have experience is uh, from seven upgrade, uh, from CentOS 7 upgrade to Elma 8 yes. is uh, uh, 1,500,000? 50. 50. 50. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's more than that. If you get to 8 and you need to upgrade again, you can upgrade in place from 8 to 9. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because we are so community focused, if you want to go from 7 to 8, we support going from CentOS 7 to Elma Linux 8 or Rocky 8 or yeah. <laughs> Oracle 8 or wherever you want to go because we care about keeping things open and, and collaborative. Mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Actually, we have the, you know, actually, actually, we have the kind of um, expression seminar in the Elma Linux Day Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, 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 this weekend. So maybe if you would interested in that, you, you can please join the uh, <laughs> Alpha State Tokyo. It's uh, free. So uh, <laughs> actually, our pro uh, there's a you know um, it's not commercial, but uh, you know our, our partner is uh, uh, explain uh, have a solution to you know uh, migrate from the CentOS seven to the. Um, uh, whatever that's eight or nine thing, uh, there is uh, some solution. So they, you know, he explain the the solution about this. So maybe if you are interested in that, please join us. Thank you. Matt? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, san <laughs> Do you have any question? Oh, of course. Of course. の最終的にというか将来的にレッドハットシャとの関係というのをどうあるのを理想として考えているのかを聞かせてもらいたいです。Sure. So our relationship with Red Hat is good. They are uh If you think about it, we don't exist without them. Right? So we continue to to work with them as we can and as they allow. We are doing as they've asked with the, the change to moving, change to using the CentOS stream as our upstream um, and pulling sources from places that they allow. We made the, the difficult but important choice to not violate their user agreements in how we get our code. And that, I mean, that goes a long way to, to building a better relationship, right? Yeah. And on, the, on, like on a personal level, we know these people and have for years. So we, we still, we're still friends. That's right. And then, uh, including Igor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, including Igor. Yeah. Personally, it's uh, difficult. <laughs> personally, we have a relationship with uh, the Ted people, you know, with uh, Benisa and Igor san. And I, I already explained that we, 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 we don't, you know, uh, uh, we just um, 
want to, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to let health policy and their, their rule, I, I want to uh, protect their rule and the policy, because it's, you know, this is uh, regulation things, so we don't, you know, fight each other, we want to uh, do each other, this is the point. This is a difference for the, you know, I don't see the other distributional things, but uh, it's a point. Oh, okay, Mr. <laughs> Takadori-san. <laughs> uh, I have to uh, add the comment about that. that. Uh, as far as I'm CyberTrust OSPO leading person, and uh, as far as I, I read the comment on Reddit, uh, the McGrath, the guy, uh, Red Hat person, wrote the blog, the Red Hat blog. He wrote about the uh, Alma Linux is doing the, uh, uh, using the uh, center stream as the upstream as the, the Red Hat said. So at least uh, as far as I read the comment on Reddit, the, the McGrath wrote, uh, he looks uh, it's good uh, the because the Ironix is following the what the Red Hat said. So uh, as far as at that point, uh, Ironix is uh, following the uh, that um, what Red Hat said and keeping the good relation with uh, Red Hat. So because of that, uh, as uh, position, I said uh, this is good relation to join to this project. Uh, so I think because of that, our company joined to the Armaniac. Thank you. <laughs> the big point is uh, CentOS stream is uh, CentOS 8 is uh, end of next May, uh, right? This is a point, I think. I don't know, computers, right? If, even if you're just a user, I want you to be there because it's because you care, you're not, you don't have to be committing code in order to provide value to the Linux community. So does that, does that answer your question? Yes, thanks a lot. Yes, no problem. Thank you for asking. We have three more minutes. <laughs> no, I, I will cut it off and we'll say, if you have more questions, you can't talk to us here. You have to come on Saturday. <laughs> I think we're good. Yeah. Thank, thank you all for coming. Thank you.